Welcome to another exciting episode of the CGC show on AETV. AETV is the voice of higher education in Africa. And today we are coming to you live from the Plus Oasis Park residence here in Accra, Ghana. And my name is Aja Omi. I am going to be your host for today. You can join in the discussion on our social media handles at AEU underscore TV on Twitter, Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube, and at AETV official on Instagram. My guest is a very special one, and I'll introduce him after the break. Do stay tuned. Are you an institution or individual? Do you intend to organize a memorable event to be archived for future reference? Then look no further than AAU Studios because it's your best bet with our spacious studio and state-of-the-art media equipment such as 4K Panasonic video cameras, Kinoflow lights, assorted microphones, live streaming equipment, among others, you are sure to get the best of productions. Visit us at Trinity Avenue, East Ligon, adjacent the National Accreditation Board, or contact the AAU Studios via the following email addresses, info at aau.org, aautv at aau.org, or ransford at aau.org. Alternatively, you can call us on plus 233-244-736280. Welcome back. If you just tuned in, you are watching the CGC show on AETV. And today we will be discussing rural estate development as a career path. And I'm very, very honored to be joined by one of Ghana's biggest and finest real estate developer. And he is an engineer. His name is Engineer Steven Debra Ablometi who is an experienced chief executive officer with a demonstrated history of working in the real estate industry. He is currently the CEO of the CPO Group, a leading Ghanaian real estate development company. He is also the first vice president of the Ghana Real Estate Developers Association and a national member of National Engineering Coordinating Team. Welcome on the show, Engineer Steven Debra Blometi. Thank you very much. And pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm very, very grateful that you're able to make time. I know you're a very, very busy person, so we are very, very honored. I've actually introduced about want our audience to know more about you. So kindly tell us a bit about yourself. All right. So um, I'm Stephen Deborah Ablometi. That's my full name, and I must say that you really pronounce the name yeah. very well. <laughs> Many people do get it wrong. Oh, okay. um, yeah. Um, so basically, uh, I'm a civil engineer by training, um, have been into this real estate space for a couple of years yeah. now, and I must say that I have uh, had touch with um, low income property development, middle income, and then the high end. So I have a cross board experience yeah. when it comes to the real estate in, in Ghana. And how has the COVID-19 impacted the um, real estate business? Well, I think we did readjustment okay. and try to strategize so mm -hmm. we'll be able to um, work and then uh, obviously make some good returns. Mm -hmm. yeah. You are one of Ghana's biggest, I mean, you're one of the leading real estate development companies in Ghana currently. How did you craft that niche for yourself? Okay, so we, uh, we started from somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Um, humble beginnings and then uh, we built it brick by brick and we are where we have today. Uh, it's been a lot of um, hard work. The mm -hmm. road has been very long and rough, but uh, we persevered, we mm -hmm. kept resilient and then we are where we have today. Yeah. And how has experience been? Ah, uh, well, it's been awesome. It's been awesome. Yeah. Because awesome. I, I, can, yeah, I know you, you are an award-winning real estate developer, not just by the title, but you've also won awards for yourself. So it definitely tells us that you are really doing very, very well. How, um, can you share with us your favorite um, selling experience? Well, selling experience, um, I remember in 2000 and 2009, that there was this big client who was going to come to tour our property. And then I have to talk to my sales team. And of course, I was part of the mm -hmm. sales team then. 
and set up the entire environment. I mean, the, the property okay. that we pitch it to sell, um, we set up our, 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 our living area very well. We put on our air condition. We make sure the place was very clean. Mm. Um, we got a chef, put him at the kitchen, and he tries to, you know, mm -hmm. do some art in there. And then the, the client walked in and he's like, wow. So it could feel like home. Yeah. So he thought he was visiting a home, you know. So he said, which of the property am I here to see? I said, this is the very one we're talking about. The marketing pitch was not long. Mm -hmm. Deal was just sealed. So, I mean, we practically dedicated and focused. And whatever we're doing, we do it mm -hmm. into detail. What really goes into selling a property to, to an agent or a client? Selling, you just need to impress the buyer. Because mind you, this buyer probably may have gone to mm -hmm. one or two other developers yeah. before getting to your end. So you have to ensure that you impress the buyer mm -hmm. and you give him exactly what he's looking out for. So yeah. in, in terms of marketing, you need to pitch your idea and all of those things. That's right. Interesting. That's right. And what do you think of the profession currently? Do you think you, are, you guys are doing very, very well? In terms of like real estate as a profession, do you think the profession is getting the recognition like other professions, like the lawyers, the doctors, the nurses, all of those um, people? Yeah, it is actually okay. because uh, everybody needs shelter. And then once it comes to shelter, you will be talking to a real estate person, mm -hmm. you know, to do that. So the recognition is there. Mm. Um, it's, it's a highly esteemed job. Yeah. yeah. Do you, are you getting the right people? To be talking to you because I know um, a lot of young young people they sell houses or they act as agents and they sell houses to people. Has that also affected your business as real estate developers? In the sense that you know, in our local communities, we have people that act as mediators when you when it comes to getting a place to rent and all of those things. Those people without the skill and I don't know the expertise like you the big people in the big in the industry has it affected your your business in no, any way No I I don't think it's it has affected our business rather it complements ours because okay. if you have a property agent out there he's working for a developer mm -hmm. so he uh, he or she brings in the client and take their commission so they help us to build our business so Okay. Yeah, basically, so that's what I think. So you guys negotiate with them? Yeah, we negotiate with them. We oh, have okay. a pre-agreement with them. So whichever person they bring, they end commission. So that's, mm. that's what we do with them. But sometimes some people end up selling a, a building or a house to somebody and they sell it to another person. Well, I think in every environment there are people who are shrewd. Okay. Um, <laughs> agents can actually do that mm -hmm. and then a developer too can do that. So okay. that's why the buyer really must be aware mm -hmm. of what you are buying. You need to to ensure that you have done your you've done proper investigation about the developer you 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 intend to buy property from, and then you make sure you you don't get mm -hmm. swindled. Yeah. So, in terms of skills and qualities, what do you think a person should have? What are the qualities that a person should have to be like the best in the game? In terms of education, schooling, what are some of the courses, the qualities and the skills that a person needs to have? Okay, so basically, the real estate profession is not for the timid. You are selling a property of about, let's say, minimum $50,000, okay. up to about $1 million. Mm -hmm. And you don't expect to be fidgeting and timid about your attitude. Mm -hmm. So you really need to have this confidence that you'll be able to convince someone that put half a million or mm. quarter a million and buy this property. So uh, I think that you really need to train yourself. You really need to go through some level of mentorship mm. and then work under some people who are experienced in the real estate space mm. that you'll be able to know the choice of words to use, uh, you know, in selling your property or doing the business. So I, I, I know of um, a number of marketing people mm we hired in the past and we have to take them through about six months training. Okay. Um, so first six months, we don't really expect them to do closing for anything because they can't mm. do it. Um, you know, selling 
uh, maybe tomatoes, you have the vibes you can use yeah. to sell tomatoes. And when it comes to selling a home, it's, it's a different it's game altogether. Game. So the person really need uh, in-depth orientation mm -hmm. to be able to grasp the, 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 the key things to say to clients and some of the things that can actually convince them. Mm -hmm. There are clients who comes around, they don't even know that they have to inquire about the honest part lease mm -hmm. on the property they want to buy. So let's say they walk to developer number one, two, three, probably you get to my place, which is the third place, and I start to talk about value of the building, I start to talk about location, mm -hmm. I start to talk about the uninspired lease, I tell you about the renewal clauses that I need. So it kind of enlightens you. Yeah. So when you go back, you're going to use all the information I have given you as a marking scheme for the rest of the developers. Mm -hmm. And mind you, any of them that will fall short of that, you're going to take them out and come back to me. Okay. So it's how vested you are in your profession that will put you at the forefront of the game. Mm, I see. So in terms of, you mentioned some of the skills that um, a person should have. In terms of business, how... Um, what are the businesses that are under real estate development? I know you're a cluster of businesses. You need marketers, you need these. What are the people that you need to have or to be able to call yourself a real estate development firm? It's a whole theme. Yeah. Uh, you have the marketers, of course, who are the engine of the, of the, of the setup. Right. You have the engineers who are the back office who do all the supervision, design. You have the architects who do the drawings. And then you, you obviously have got the accounting mm -hmm. team that have to get their acts right um, to, to be sure that everything is okay. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there are consultants that are also outside who uh, also give periodic advice on uh, land safety issues and all that. Let me, let me just tell you this. Um, I have one old man in Accra okay. who have the history about every land wherever the land is located. So I don't only really subscribe to search yeah. results from land title, land commission and all that. After doing all those search from government agency, I go to the old one and say, listen, I have this property, this offer at this location. What's the history? And the history he will tell you will determine whether I'm going to buy that land mm -hmm. or I'm not going to buy it. Because today there are people with title documents, they don't have possession because they didn't inquire about the history. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I see. Well, I would like you to talk more about some of the challenges that you faced, but then we'll do that after the break. Please stay with us. Are you a fresh graduate from senior high school or a mature applicant? Thinking of a university to enroll in Ghana? Is it possible to get a university of high moral and discipline standard? Then look no further than the Presbyterian University College Ghana where we believe in holistic education. We train the head, heart, and hands. We are Christian University accredited by the National Accreditation Board Ghana and affiliated to the University of Ghana, Ligon, KNUSC, and University of Cape Coast. We offer instant employable programs such as physician assistantship, nursing, mathematics, rural and community development, environmental and natural resource management, business administration, social studies, business studies, information and communication technology, business economics, agribusiness, with experienced, innovative and disciplined lecturers to take care of students' needs in a conducive environment. Our campuses are located at Okuru Abitifi, Ekriyatem Ekropong, Asantiachin, Tema and Kumasi. Wondering how to apply to the school? It's simple. You should have an entry requirement of WASI A1 to C6, SSSCE A to D, HND holder, GBC, and ABC holder. Mature applicants should be 25 years and above. Apply by purchasing an e-voucher at 100 Ghana City from the following banks. Agricultural Development Bank, GCB Bank, EcoBank, HFC Bank, Prudential Bank, Unibank, Universal Merchant Bank, and Fidelity. Buy forms using Visa or MTN Mobile Money by visiting the school's website at www.presbyuniversity.edu.gh. Application forms may also be obtained at all college campuses. The Presbyterian Church of Ghana Head Office Osukoku Hill and all PCG offices throughout the country. Now you can walk confidently in the job market thanks to Presbyterian University College Ghana. 
Call us or visit our website for more info. Welcome back. If you just tuned in, it still is the CGC show on AAU TV, and we have been discussing real estate development as a career. My guest, engineer Stephen De um, Debra Ablometi, has delved deeper into the issue, but I want him to talk more on how he gets his clients. How do you get your clients? Well, I must say, I use a lot of um, new strategies every now and then. Okay. One formula doesn't work beyond six months, so I have to be changing from time to time. Okay. Um, so many other strategies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And has social media played uh, um, a role? Yeah, definitely. Um, social media is about uh, somebody mm -hmm. knowing someone and things like that. Mm -hmm. So though most of the people on social media are not uh, mm -hmm. practical buyers, if I should say so, but these people do know people who can mm -hmm. actually buy. So, of course, social media has been a great addition to our sales. I saw that you have partners all across the world. How did you get those connections? Okay, my, my supplier yeah. partners. Okay, so I, I am somebody who attends a lot of exhibition outside okay. the country. So whenever I am in Italy, UK, US, Dubai, what have you, mm. China, I come across these people, we exchange contact and then... Uh, we try to get sample of their materials and we start working. Mm -hmm. And one thing I do is, uh, however, let's say, whatever product I have on the market today, mm -hmm. if you come back here in a year, you will realize that the product have improved. Mm -hmm. So I'm always on the lookout for great stuff so that I can add value to my products. Do you kind of um, interview with your clients to know what exactly they need before you sell anything to them or you just tell them that these are what are available and so okay so first of all before i design a project mm. i undertake um, a comprehensive research okay um collect data around town from individual do survey monkeys and mm. things like that and get to know the perspective of the market so i design a product for a hungry market Okay. That's the kind of approach I use. Okay. Yeah. And do you just design and like build and construct only, or you sometimes make the person choose whatever they, they like, and then you you build it for the person? Okay. So um, we actually do we design and build, okay. and then uh, people come in and buy. So you yeah. involve architects, all those people. Yes, we involve architects, um, other engineering specialization. Um, to render services to us and all mm. that. Yeah. Then it's more like an investment thing because you put in a lot of work hoping to hoping that somebody would like it to 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 buy and then you make some money. Doesn't it worry you in any way? No, it doesn't. It's just like the story of a good chef. All right. Mm. If a chef cooks and is out of the kitchen, he knows that the guests at the restaurant are going to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So if you're not a good chef, you're going to put a menu down that people are not going to enjoy it. So the same thing applies in our field. So we, we put something on the table that the market wants. For instance, um, if I want to undertake a development and my target is a young family, mm -hmm. I know exactly what the needs of a young family are. Mm -hmm. And I would design a product to meet their need. Okay. Uh, so basically, that's how I go about it. Uh, so you involve, like you put in, you get some demographics and all of those Absolutely. Things. Wow, it's yeah. quite tedious. I was thinking it's just about family building and construction in it. No. You just sell it. No, not at all. Let's say, for instance, if you want to build for a young graduate, mm. first of all, they don't have the cash. Exactly. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. And, and you, you really need to research and find out how much mm. uh, should be the cost of a property that these guys can actually afford. Oh. So you, you now build something that they can actually afford. And don't forget, though their affordability, um, 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 what do you call, mm. rate, mm. It's, it's quite low. But these guys have got very high taste. Mm. They want to live in a contemporary environment. Affordable so, luxury. Affordable luxury. <laughs> so you have to ensure that, uh, of course, you create space. You can put his flat screen. Mm -hmm. You can't deny him that. You have to ensure that he's got a stylish contemporary kitchen, that a young woman will feel that, you know, in mm -hmm. that space. So basically, you just put some twist and turn and ensure that the product turns out well. Mm -hmm. And once they appreciate it, I'm sure they will speak to their family members and other yeah. people, get one or two 
people to come on board. And I've seen a lot of young graduates, male, female, dating to put their money together and buy a home. So, yeah, mm, that's interesting. it. Interesting. Um, has, has there been an instance where um, probably somebody, um, a client will come and tell you that, okay, this is the kind of home that I want, but then I, I can see that you have this. So what, what can we do about it? Okay, so I must say we allow for customization. Okay. So let's say even in this apartment here, if you buy a two bed, one bed or even studio, and you want to have certain special gizmo in your studio space, mm -hmm. yes, we allow you to do that customization. I see. Yeah. yeah. Um, talk about a time where you had a hard time creating a relationship with a client, like a tenant or a owner of, a, um, of any of the homes that you, how did you handle that? Okay, so, I mean, I think I've had that a couple of times. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, people will always not conform to basic rules and regulations exactly. when it comes to um, things like gated community yeah. and things like that. And you have um, residents who are neighbor, neighbor to this individual um, calling you the developer and it's like, look, you need to want this homeowner and stuff like that. So we've had one or two of those cases. And um, we usually try to use dialogue to resolve the matter. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the time we win on that. I see. Interesting. But uh, um, can you share with us some other challenges you've, you've encountered along the way? Well, <laughs> no real estate developer in Ghana will escape what I'm going to tell you. Okay. Uh, issues with lands. Mm -hmm. No developer will escape that. Uh, no matter how genuine the purchase process was, uh, no matter how clean the buyer is, there can always be a third party coming from nowhere. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, don't even have any legitimate document who just want to test the water. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, it affects your resources. You might not be able to lose the land to this individual, mm -hmm. but the person can break down your walls, can demolish part of your building, and stuff like that. So you may have to involve the police in one case or two. So why don't you do all the necessary research before you start building on a land? Well, you have done the research, you've done everything, but there are people who are on scoop rolls. They are all over the place. They are all over the place. Mm. They know very well this land doesn't belong to them. They know you have the legitimate document to the land, but they will still want to extort something from something you, from you. Some way, somehow. So you just have to give them something in No, I don't give them anything. I drive them away. How do you do that? Because I, 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 once my documents are legit, I use the police and other people. And it will cost you some resources, but it's all part of the business. business. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. There's been lots of cases of fraud in the real estate business. I, was mention, I mentioned it earlier to you that sometimes you probably have a building somewhere. You know that you are the one in charge of selling this property. But then somebody somewhere else would come and then take over and say that I, I actually have paid to this individual and so I own this place. How, how, how do you deal with that? Well, I think uh, that particular thing boils down to the arrangement between the property owner mm -hmm. and then the intermediary. Mm -hmm. So what it is is that um, property owner is supposed to establish some protocols in terms of selling his property. Okay. For me, uh, I do not have any agent who can engage a buyer from start to finish. I okay. will have to pick it up from some point. Okay. You, can in, you can introduce the property to the buyer, but you wouldn't be the person to take the buyer through, um, the let's say, documentation. Okay. Of course, payment is not your game, that's mine. Mm. So I will have to do that and um, ensure the a swift closure mm. of the entire purchase project. Yeah. Based, based, based on your experience so far in the field, what do you think is the future of real estate development in Africa especially? Well, I think, let me just zoom down on Ghana. Okay. Because Ghana have, you know, we all, we all, we all talk about 1.7 million deficit. Mm -hmm. So what it means is that the majority of the people don't have home. Yeah. And once mm -hmm. there is a demand, it presupposes that there is a need for supply. Mm -hmm. So if we are unable to supply what the volumes are calling for, uh, it tells all of us that there is a future for that market. So real estate business is never a dull moment. Mm -hmm. um, it's lucrative. 
but you need to work hard because mm -hmm. there are a lot of people in the space it's also capital intensive so um, it is not the ideal mm. business yeah. for beginners but you can start from some aspect of real estate because real estate is big mm. it's not only about the developer uh, the agent is also doing real estate um, the consultant is also doing real estate so basically you just need to start mm. from somewhere as you gradually climb up you, me you mentioned that the business is lucrative and you've highlighted some of the challenges that you encountered. What are some of the benefits of being a real estate developer? To every work, I believe there is reward. Yeah. That's the reason why you should be um, as early as 7 a.m. you're at your office and probably close at 8 p.m. Yeah. You are certainly there for some benefit. So I might say it's very rewarding business and once you maintain your quality, um, you keep a clean sheet of reputation, and your prices are reasonable, you will win the hearts of many of the prospective buyers. What would you tell anybody who would want to be a real estate developer, probably a student studying real estate development, or anybody that wants to go into a real estate development business? I think it's a business that you need to be very disciplined. Okay. You don't need a lot of motivation to, you know, probably listen to people's story and say, well, I'm the next developer. Mm -hmm. You need to be disciplined because you'll be tempted with money. You'll be, women will tempt you. You know, women like properties. Yeah. And if you are young like myself, mm -hmm. you get a lot of young women just about your age group who want to give you something for a home. If you don't exactly. take it, you're going to exchange your house with something else. <laughs> so basically... You, you've got to be very disciplined, yeah. you've got to be very dedicated to your work, you have to be focused, you have to be a great team leader. Um, real estate gives you the opportunity to work with a lot of young people. Um, you have to give them that drive they need so they'll be able to realize the dream that you are carrying, especially as the number one person. So you need all these things. Financially, you have to be very disciplined. Other than that, you go buy G wagon, you go buy some other stuff. When you don't need, uh, you need the money for the business. What I do is I replant of almost about 95% of our internally generated income back into the business. So you wouldn't find me more often on the corridors of the banks because I try to grow organically and, 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 and build a philosophy. I am not looking out for somebody to say, oh, that's Steve going, that's his car. That's not my interest. It's, it's, I want to build something for, for the future. Mm -hmm. I want to build something for Africa. And I want to change some story yeah. um, here in Africa. Well, thank you so much for making time to join us on the CGC show to talk about real estate development. It's, it's actually uh, like an honor to have a big person like you come on the show. And thank you too for tuning in. We have been discussing real estate development as a career and my guest spoke right on the issue. If you have any questions, any suggestions, you can send them via the WhatsApp and a number provided beneath your screen. Or you can join the conversation on our social media handles at AU underscore TV on Twitter, Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube and at AETV Official on Instagram. My name is Aja Omi and I have been your host for today's episode. Do not forget that if you have, if you have plans to do whatever you want to do, don't forget, start somewhere and you will definitely get to where you want to get to. This is AETV, the voice of higher education. We'll see you next time.